r slash no sleep posted by you slash scratch menace i recently started working as it for a restaurant chain the corporate office has some very strange rules part two before i begin thank you all for reading my posts and for all the kind comments about kevin well not about kevin mostly about how what happened is pretty much his own fault while i don't disagree with that the guilt probably won't go away anytime soon regardless I'll keep doing my job and updating you all on the happenings. Another thing I've noticed is some speculation about the rules and what they mean. To tell you the truth, I'm still not sure what happens when you break most of them. My luck has been on another level, so despite making a mistake here or there I've only had a handful of truly bad experiences, one of those being Kevin. Even though it hasn't been long since the incident, I've seen Kevin once more after that day. As far as I can tell, if you break the rule of answering an employee's request for help with Tori's computer then you end up like he did. I couldn't help but wonder if any of his humanity remained after I saw him again. Maybe that thing isn't him at all. And then there's the new yellow eye rule. Admittedly, it's more annoying than anything. There's an abundance of glass around the office, much of it being unavoidable. Those eyes have been appearing almost every day in any pane of glass they can. If you're unlucky enough to see the eyes while you need to use the bathroom, you're pretty much screwed. Somehow the lights are never on when people enter either of the two bathrooms in the building, although everyone swears they don't touch the switches. Aside from those, some were curious about the strange scheduling of shifts. I'd honestly rather just forget about the time I was here past 1021, but since there were some questions about how it works I'll explain what I know. The rule pretty much boils down to this, never be in the building before 8am or after 1021pm. The reason we're never scheduled later than 10 p.m. is to allow time for us to close properly without being in danger of being here too late. And even if someone gets distracted, they can theoretically still be out with time to spare. As for what changes the schedule, I have no clue. It's clearly not my boss or anyone else who works here. My best guess is some otherworldly being has figured out how to use a computer and is trying to trick us into being here during the unholy hours. And trust me, you do not want to be here. The sounds that thing made still echo in my brain at night. The people it imitated to lure me out, the sinister threats it slung while laughing at me, the visions it forced into my mind. Those were far and away the worst 10 hours of my life. Anyway, I'd rather not linger on that. Especially considering the new shit that just got dropped on me. Last week after the Kevin incident, my boss sent me an email telling me that I'd start being sent out to restaurants for on-site troubleshooting. I'm sure you can imagine that this was equal parts exciting and troubling. On one hand, this was a chance to get out of the office and do some hands-on work in a totally new environment. On the other hand, his mention of store protocols made the hairs on my arm raise with anxiety. As promised, HR sent me the list. There aren't quite as many rules as there are here at the office, but some of them are downright terrifying. Here's what the email said. To the IT department of, redacted. Before traveling to any of our locations, please be sure to read and commit to memory the following procedures. Just as the rules of the office, these are to be followed at all times when on site at a restaurant. Failure to follow these rules will result in massive repercussions that you are likely somewhat knowledgeable on by now. 1. Always travel to our locations using the company vehicle. If the company vehicle is not available for some reason, do not go to the site in your own car. This will be seen as disrespectful, and at the very least you will lose your vehicle. 2. The customers are entirely safe from harm in the restaurants. If at any point you see something that suggests otherwise, do not trust your eyes. Leave immediately, sit in the company vehicle with the heat on full blast, and wait for 15 minutes. If you see the entire restaurant staring at you through the windows, drive back to the office. Do not worry about tools or equipment that are left behind, these things can be replaced. 3. If you must get on a ladder for any reason, notify the store manager. They will instruct the staff not to bother you during this time. If at any point while on a ladder you hear someone call out to you or ask if you need help, do not respond. Ignore them, finish your work, and descend the ladder with your eyes closed. If you feel a presence behind you after stepping off the ladder, remain still with your eyes closed until it leaves. 4. Always count how many steps up the ladder you have climbed. If you are in a Rule 3 situation and notice that you've descended the ladder further than you ascended originally, climb back up until you feel the top of it. Wait 30 seconds and attempt to descend again. Repeat this process until you are sure you've only climbed the correct number of steps down. 5. Do not touch any raw meat in the restaurant. The smell will attract them to you. 6. A strangely tall man, 
similar to the one found in the corporate office, may appear in the manager's office at any of our locations. If encountered, do not look at him for more than three seconds. If you do, leave the building as quickly as possible and get on the most open stretch of road you can find. Drive as fast as you can and do not look in the rearview mirror until you can no longer hear the heavy breathing. 7. Do not swear in the restaurants. It may anger the customers and cause a meltdown. 8. If a customer approaches you and asks a question in a language you don't understand, except for Spanish, respond with Tempus known to Venet. They will nod slowly and leave the building. If you respond incorrectly, you will notice a woman in a black pantsuit sitting in the corner of the restaurant with an impossibly wide smile. Exit the building immediately and return to the office. You must leave before her mouth begins to split. We understand that these rules are more nuanced and difficult to abide by than our standard corporate office protocols. However, these incidents are not quite as common, and we trust that you have learned how to properly adhere to such procedures. If you have any questions regarding these rules, please contact your CTO. After reading the email I wasn't really sure what to think. I had already had a close shave with death on my own time, and likely another with the whole Kevin incident. And it truly didn't take a genius to figure out why they waited so long to send me out to restaurants. These rules made our demon shift scheduler seem like a child wearing a white sheet for Halloween. I figured that I might get lucky and have a bit more time to mentally prepare myself and fully commit the rules to memory before being sent out. And until today I thought all was going fairly well. Unfortunately, I got a text from my boss early on in my shift. Our store in, Redacted City, needs you to replace a faulty camera. You'll be going out there tomorrow. I'm in deep shit. The deepest I've been in since I started working for this company. The universe must not have taken kindly to me bragging about my relatively good fortune in the months that I've been here, because all of my luck died the moment I entered that restaurant. The task was relatively simple. Replace a faulty camera near the front cash registers. It had already been confirmed that it was the camera itself that was the problem, so I would only have to unmount the current one and mount a fresh camera. No cabling, no rewiring anything, nothing. In and out, 15 minutes. This specific restaurant was about 30 minutes from the office. I left directly after lunch, tossing the tool bag into the backseat of the company truck and hopping in on the driver's side. Briefly, I wondered why something this simple couldn't be delegated to one of the repairmen of the company. But I couldn't really argue with the fact that it made more sense for IT to handle sensitive equipment that we had set up in the first place. The drive was uneventful. I careened down the highway humming Tempest known to invent it to myself, a ball of anxiety and excitement gathering in my stomach. Finally, I'd get to see an entirely new aspect of the job. Sure, there were numerous rules I had to constantly be aware of, but they had said it themselves. These things don't happen nearly as frequently at the restaurants as they do at the office. That thought eased my discomfort a bit, and I remained optimistic for the remainder of the drive. This would just be a good chance for some new experience. Honestly, I was kinda hoping I would have a partner for my first visit to a store. I'm not even really sure how the change is the way the rules work, but it would at the very least be additional reassurance. Unfortunately, this happened to be one of my solo shifts and the camera was in too important of a spot to put it off. As I pulled up to the restaurant, nothing immediately struck me as off. There were a fair number of customers as it was still lunchtime, and through the windows I could see employees looking bored out of their minds as they worked. Typical restaurant affair. I got out of the truck and went inside to check the camera out for myself. Inside, the smell of chicken filled my senses. Even having eaten 30 minutes prior, the scent made me hungry. I ignored my nose though, walking behind the counter. I got a few glances from the employees, but they noticed the company logo on my jacket and left me to my business. Oh damn, I muttered, looking up at the camera needing to be fixed. It was higher up than I'd expected it to be. I was hoping to avoid any ladder usage by simply using a chair, as suggested by a clever Redditor, but it simply wouldn't be possible here. I went back outside to grab the ladder off the truck as well as the tools. Once inside and set up, I went looking for the manager. I found her in the back office, working on next week's schedule. Excuse me, I'm with IT, I said after giving a small knock to alert her. I'm here to fix the camera, so I'll be on a ladder for a few minutes. The look on her face worried me slightly. She almost seemed surprised that I was here. I'll let the employees know, she replied, standing swiftly. Don't be long. I couldn't tell if she was saying that because I'd be in the way while working or purely for my own sake. I hoped it wasn't the latter. Once everyone had been notified not to disturb me, I got to work. The steps of the ladder loomed before me a foreboding sensation washing over my body as I placed my foot on the first step. 
1. I counted up four rungs, resting both of my feet on that row and repeating the number in my head. I would simply count back down and have zero mark when I should be on the floor. Confident that I was as prepared as I'd ever be, I started unscrewing the camera from its mount. It came out rather easily, and I unplugged the single cable that was running to it. There wasn't enough space at the top of the ladder for the screws, screwdriver, new camera, and old camera, so I began descending with the used camera in hand. As I counted my steps down, a faint call interrupted my train of thought. You need help with that stuff? I froze instantly and closed my eyes. Both of my feet were still on the ladder, and the surprise had made me forget how far down I'd gone. I figured the safest bet would be to climb back up and wait before descending again. After reversing my previous movements, I confirmed that I was four steps up by touching the top of the ladder. Its height was the same as it had been previously, and a sigh of relief escaped me. Thirty seconds passed, and I repeated my descent, this time with my eyes closed. Three, two, one, zero. Like a fool, I stepped down on zero as if expecting solid ground to be there. My foot swung through empty air and I faltered, my other leg already prepared to join it on what I believed would be the floor. As my top foot slipped from its step, I attempted to save my fall. But the toe of my shoe clipped past an additional rung and I staggered off of the ladder and onto the ground a couple feet down. I managed to stumble just a bit and maintain my balance, but I was no longer touching the ladder. You know that feeling of walking into a heated building after being outside in the winter? That's what the transition felt like when I fell from the ladder. The sounds of the restaurant were muted, as if a door had been closed between me and them. Nothing else made noise wherever I was. The only thing I felt was the strange heat and a horrible pressure which invaded my mind. Like having a hand pressed to your face, squeezing your temples. Suddenly, somewhere behind me, I heard a slight scuffing sound. Maybe the noise a small dog would make as it skitters across a tile floor. But the sound grew in volume, quickly becoming a deliberate pounding of feet, too many feet, way too many fucking feet, moving along the ground. I reached out, desperate to find the ladder but refusing to open my eyes. Luckily, I hadn't fallen particularly far back, and the cool metal found its way into my hands in seconds. I put one foot on the bottom rung and began to ascend, listening to the battering of feet grow closer. I'm not sure how many steps I climbed, but there couldn't have been more than two additional tiers that I had fallen past originally. What I climbed was at least double the height of the full ladder, but I kept on going until the pressure released, the sounds of the restaurant came back to life, and the approaching footsteps disappeared. I let out the breath I'd been unconsciously holding. I remained at the top of the ladder for a few minutes, waiting for my heart to slow down. My mind started to wonder what would have happened if I hadn't found the ladder in time, but I brushed the thought away. If I hurried up and finished this job, I could get back to the office and forget about it. A visit from Kevin was sounding like a goddamn vacation by then. Once I'd calmed myself, I counted my way down the ladder and fortunately hit the floor when I counted zero. I couldn't sense any presence behind me, and when I opened my eyes everything was normal. I placed the old camera in the tool bag, cursing it silently. I briefly thought that if these demons could read minds my ass would be done. Having better things to worry about. I removed the fresh camera from its box and climbed the four steps back up. As I started screwing the camera base into the mount, another soft call came out from behind me. I was less startled this time and ignored it fairly easily, their words barely registering. I couldn't even understand what they were saying, so what was the point in listening? Once I began to place the cover over the fully screwed in base, it dawned on me. Now, I'm not fluent in anything other than English. I know the tiniest bit of French, and I've been decently exposed to Spanish throughout the years, though I can't speak it or really understand it to save my life. But in this moment that exposure told me that, without question, whatever was just said to me wasn't Spanish, and it sure as shit hadn't been English. I stared at the camera lens, knowing that I hadn't been prepared for a possible clashing of the rules. Did I respond with a phrase, or did I say nothing and just hope the latter rule would override the others? As I gazed into the glass covering the lens, I noticed that it gave me an awful fisheye reflection of the ground below. Directly behind the ladder, staring up at me, was a man in a grey suit with a blue tie. It was hard to make out his features with the horrible stretching and squashing caused by the shape of the glass, but the clearest thing was his teeth. Huge and white, stretched into an uncomfortable looking smile. Even with the assumption that the reflection was acting like a house of mirrors on this guy, it was clear that he didn't belong. I practically threw the rest of the camera into place. The job was complete, all that was left was to check the camera feed in the office to make sure it was connected properly. 
Ready to leave, I slid the screwdriver into my pocket, closed my eyes, and counted my way to the floor. Luckily, I managed to not step into an alternate dimension this time. Once on the floor, I waited a few seconds before opening my eyes to ensure no one was behind me. When I did and turned around, all seemed normal. I beelined for the office, confirmed that the camera worked, and came back out to collect my things. The moment that I exited the kitchen area, I noticed her. She was sitting in the far corner of the restaurant, her black pantsuit standing out in the crowd, her face contorted into a horrible, Joker-esque smile. The corners of her mouth were tattered and torn, blood dribbling from them and onto her clothes. She stared directly at me, her grin continuously tearing at her cheeks, pulling them apart in a gruesome display. I instinctively glanced at the tools, wondering if it was really okay to simply leave them there. Obviously it was, and I started towards the door when I realized that. As I glanced back towards the woman, I noticed the tables closest to her had begun to stare as well. I slammed through the front entrance without hesitation, sprinting to the truck and leaping inside. As I started the vehicle and threw it into reverse, my eyes were pulled towards the store one final time. In every single window, a pair of eyes watched me. They tracked my movements as I reversed out of the parking spot and pulled out onto the road. The second I was on the highway, I called my boss. Hello? I think I broke rule 8, I blurred it out, completely foregoing any greetings. When I didn't get an immediate response, I spoke up again. Someone spoke to me in a different language while I was on a ladder and I didn't respond. What's going to happen? Finally, he replied. Did her mouth split? Yes, it did. Then I'll have to call and have that store shut down for now. I stayed silent with shock as he continued. Do not look at anything you see in your peripheral vision on your drive back. It doesn't matter what you think it is, keep your eyes on the road. Call me once you're back at the office, but do not leave the truck. Yes sir. We hung up and almost immediately I noticed a car inching forward on my left, almost lining its front seats up with mine. Even without looking, I could tell from the cocked angle of their head and the immense sensation of being watched. I turned up my music and ignored everything for the remainder of the drive. Even when another car pulled up on my right. Even when I could feel the eyes of the car behind me in my rear view mirror. Even when the passenger seat was no longer unoccupied. I kept my head forward, wondering how badly I had just fucked up. I pulled into the parking lot at the office and called my boss, forcing my eyes to stay forward and not wander towards the awful black suited abomination sitting shotgun. He answered on the first ring. Is the driver side's door facing the building side door? He asked. Not yet, give me a second. Okay. Make sure you're as far away as you can be, but lined up with the door. Once you're there keep your eyes forward, but unbuckle your seatbelt and open the door. When you see a bright red flash by the side door, slowly make your way over here while keeping the truck in your peripherals at all times. You'll have to walk sideways. Don't stop, don't run, and don't look directly at the truck. My mind was reeling. My boss is typically pretty serious, but there was a nervous edge to his voice. Whatever was going on, it was the real deal, and I doubted there was any room for error. I followed his instructions, trying to remain as calm as possible. You've got about 15 seconds before I'll be at the door. You're going to feel like you want to turn around and look when you start moving. You're going to feel presences around you. Keep staring ahead and do not look at them. I stayed silent. In my peripherals I could see my companion sitting perfectly still, their head turned sideways to stare at me. As the creature bored holes into me with its gaze, I noticed movement out of the corner of my left eye. Moments later, a bright red flash ignited. I stepped out of the vehicle without hesitation. Slowly but surely, I started my awkward crab walk across the parking lot. In any other situation, the way I was moving would be laughable. The red light waved back and forth a bit before staying still. I tried to keep my focus solely on it without letting the truck leave my sight, but the urge to look back was unbearably tempting. I could still feel that stare, that horrible gaze which I hadn't even fully looked at as it pierced me from across the pavement. I was halfway there. Shadows started to dance on the edge of my vision near the truck, not unlike those I'd seen during the Kevin incident. Something brushed against my neck and startled me, almost enough to make me spin around. The sensation of being in danger and needing to face it head-on weighed heavily on my mind. I fought against it and maintained my orientation. It couldn't have been more than 20 seconds of me shuffling across the lot before I reached the door, though it felt like an eternity. But then I was there, stumbling sideways through the door which my boss promptly pulled shut. Not a second later the sound of the truck door slamming reached us. It's not gonna come in here, is it? No, we're safe. What, 
was that. My boss lifted a blindfold he'd been wearing from his eyes and gave me a look that said you're better off not knowing. I guess he realized that after a scare like that I deserve to know something, though. Honestly, no one knows, he admitted to me. All we know is that she, well, it latches onto people. If you don't respond correctly to the question you're asked, it starts to probe at your mind. That's why you can suddenly see that woman in the restaurant after you've made the mistake. But if it was just in my mind, why did you need the blindfold? He shakes his head at me as if I were a clueless child. You've worked here long enough to know that there's no such thing as being too safe. I've seen that thing appear to me as well after taking hold of an employee. The last thing we need is for it to latch on to more people in the office. The way he described it attaching itself to people made my stomach drop. So how long will it be latched onto me? No longer than a few days. If you think you see it at any point, ignore it. It can only harm you if you return to the restaurant where this started or pay it too much attention. My head was reeling. The idea of seeing that horrible fucking smile in my peripherals while in my home made me consider simply staying at work for the next 72 hours. My boss saw things a little differently, though. I'll give you the next three days off, paid of course. Don't worry, those days won't come from your total. He must have noticed me stiffen after he said that, because he reassured me as best he could. Not that it was uncharacteristic of him to care about his employees, but he was really laying it on thick here. I couldn't help but feel that these next few days would be torture. After informing me of my time off, I was sent home. My boss accompanied me through the parking lot, telling me not to let my eyes wander too much lest I see something better left unnoticed. Once I was in my car he waved me off and I left, wondering what the hell I was going to do for three days stuck in my house with some crazy entity. To be honest, they went by about how I expected. I spent my time hanging around the house, playing video games, and making excuses to my parents about why I was off for so long. Occasionally while sitting in my room I would see something stir in the darkness, but I always kept my eyes glued firmly to the screen. Even as the shadows steadily grew closer across the days. Even when they entered my room on the third day. By the fourth day I was more than ready to return to work and be rid of this thing. But when I stepped out of the house and saw the dark silhouette sitting in the driver's seat of my car, I immediately slammed the door shut and called my boss. The phone call wasn't particularly comforting. He basically told me to wait a few more days and let him know if things got better or worse. It's been almost a week now since I went to the restaurant and it's still here. There are times when I can't use the toilet or take a shower because it'll appear. I haven't been paying this thing masquerading as a sharply dressed businesswoman any mind for the most part, always averting my gaze, but it won't stop. And no, I will not call it a she. That would be an insult to women everywhere. Whatever I'm dealing with is not a woman, nor is it human. Sometimes when I'm in my bed at night I'll open my eyes and see a figure standing in the corner. Oftentimes when I blink it's gone or at least I think it is. Usually it's just found a different place to hide. It hasn't really been that much harder to sleep, since I know I'll be safe with my eyes closed. But waking up is worse now. Waking up and seeing something standing at the corner of the hallway. Brushing your teeth without looking in the mirror or turning at all. Talking to your parents while wondering if at some point they'll notice the unwelcome guest in the middle of the living room. I hope this stops soon so I can just go back to work.